This is a great scrap wood project and in fact I'll be using my old outfeed table and the first thing I'm going to do is cut it to size and I'll take a little bit off of each end and I'm going for an overall length of 36 inches. For the platform of the fence, and this will depend on your saw, but for my saw, I like to make the platform three and three quarters of an inch. For the back of the fence, I'll make the rip at three inches. The new fence will be attached to the saw like this. First I'll have to attach these two pieces. But this is a good way to just make a few marks to make sure you don't put any nails where the saw blade is going to cut through the sacrificial fence. The reason why I don't make the platform too deep is because you still need to be able to read the numbers on the saw. So in this case the platform is three and three quarters and I can still see that the saw is set at a 45 degree angle. Next I'll use a little wood glue and I'll nail the two pieces together making sure not to add any nails in the center part right here. I've got some glue squeeze out in here, so I want to make sure I get rid of that. Okay, so now I'll just attach the fence to the saw. Make sure it's set up where the blade isn't going to hit where a nail is. And I'll use two screws in the back. You can see that this saw once had a laser, which never really worked very well. But once I have the kerf cut into this fence, I'll always be able to line the mark on the molding up with that kerf, and it's much more accurate than a laser. For the most part, I hold the material with my left hand and operate the saw with my right. So I'm going to set the saw at a 45 degree angle and make the first cut in this position. So now that I've got the new fence, let's make a quick frame to test it out. The other nice thing about a sacrificial fence is it supports the material so you don't get any tip out, tip out, chip out, <laughs> or tear out. Another thing I like to do is put a piece of tape on the fence so I'm not writing on the fence, at least right away. I like to keep them looking nice for a little while. I want the inside of the frame to measure nine and a quarter, so I'm going to hold the one at the short point of the miter and not forget to add an inch and put a mark at 10 and a quarter. And I'll extend that mark so I'll be able to see it when it's on the saw. Now I'll align that mark with the kerf cut into the sacrificial fence. While I've got the molding in position, I'll make a mark on the fence for the next cut.
The one thing you need to keep in mind when you're using a sacrificial fence is you don't need to bring the saw all the way down. Once you cut through the molding, then you're good. A lot of times people make the mistake of cutting too far and actually cutting through their sacrificial fence. So it's not too difficult to avoid that, but it's just something to keep in mind. When I make this frame, I'm using one inch nails and wood glue. And I've got a wet rag here. I'm gonna wet my hands and that will let me get a good grip on the molding so I can clamp it with my hands. And because the nails are only one inches long, I don't need to worry about hitting my index finger. So I've got the miter clamped nicely. And that's a nice tight miter, beautiful cut. Okay, well I know that I've posted videos on how to make a sacrificial fence in the past, but I think that this video is maybe a little bit more clear and a little bit more to the point. And just in case you didn't see one of those videos, because they are kind of old, here's a new one. And definitely a great addition to any shop. And so is this miter stand. If you didn't see this project, definitely check it out. The tutorial is on my channel and the free plans are on my site. Definitely a great addition to any shop. You've got a drawer in the front here. It's a double-sided cabinet. So you generally, I just store paint cans on both sides. But it's just great to have this uh, shop table or, or workstation that can be moved around the shop. So on another note, I'm really excited to be part of the Makers Mob. I've talked about it in the past. I am joining the likes of Jimmy DeResta and uh, Jesse DeGeese, the Samurai Carpenter. And one of the things that I'm going to be offering on my Makers Mob are professional art projects. I'm a professional artist. That's a big part of what I do. And there's a lot of technical aspects to of what I generally consider building a painting. So along with furniture projects, I will also be showing you how to make the paintings that I've been making for the last 20 years. And over here, I've got a project that I'm working on now. This is going to be a painting of Jimi Hendrix on steel and there's a lot of technical aspects that go into a painting like this because for one I don't want the painting to weigh a couple hundred pounds I want to keep it light two I got to think about the paint that's going to adhere to the steel the glue that's going to adhere to the brace panel how to make the brace panel so all those types of details I'll be going over on my makers mob so I hope that you'll check it out the doors for my Makers Mob closes on February 28th. Uh, and again, I'll have a link in the description, so definitely check that out. And as always, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.